welcome back to my youtube channel so guys today i'll be doing something a little bit different i'll be showing you guys how to create a dynamic button with rehat gears so today we'll be talking about rehat gears so one thing employees really look at when they want to hire a rehat developer is to see how dynamic you do things because react is one of the good things react is there to do is to make you do things once and not have to do it again so i'll be showing you how to create this dynamic button so what do i mean by dynamic button so this button we can only have one button on our page all we need to do is to pass some values like the width height and color to read that is all that is needed so instead of you going through css files creating multiple buttons at once creating buttons and buttons so let me go ahead and show you the code so all you really need to do is just to create one single button so this is the folder structure for React, the best way to structure your project so you have a folder called components you have a folder called helpers so in the helpers you have things like art button help helpers okay just like like a loader pagination since that you really need to just do it once and import it anywhere in your file so and then the component component don't mistake it don't look at the name like component or what is component just look at it like the word pages so we have pages we have pages folder layout folder so inside the layout folder we have um our layout which is what you see here this is the layout you understand so this is how we do things dynamic in react so here i have number.js you can see what is in the navbar you can see my app header you can see this dot props dot handle sidebar and this is the um, navbar sorry this is the navbar and this is the sidebar so all these props i'm passing is just to create this sidebar to make the sidebar responsive in the sense that when a user clicks on a, a, a on the toggle menu it toggles the sidebar but later in the future i will show you guys how to build the sidebar and we'll have our hamburger instead of clicking on the number text so we we'll have our hamburger here and this stuff is responsive so if you actually need the code you can subscribe to my channel and ask me for it and i'll provide it to you so with that being said let's go back to our project so here we have the sidebar and here we have um the index.js so what happens here yeah right here if, if we go forward you can see i import the number from the number folder import the sidebar from the sidebar folder for the sidebar page so what i did here is that i got the number i got the sidebar then after that i create this div center margin to give it a padding and margin because of the css position we use and we call on this dot props dot children. So what this dot props dot children actually do is that it helps us to hold anything on the center of the page. So all I need to do is go to my app dot js and import my layout. You can see where I'm putting it from. My layout then index dot js. Then I wrap my layout with whatever components. So if I have multiple components, all I need to do is just and copy the layout again so with this you can have multiple layers on multiple layouts on your page your page can have different layouts you can see this all i need to just is to copy the layout again add the component i want it to be seen in another page maybe like for example i can use the about page sorry capital letter about page so we can use the about page something like this so all you need to do is just to wrap it with the comp with the layered components. So these are the kind of things employees want to see when they ask you for your React JS code. They really want to see if you are repeating your code. They really want to see how advanced, how good you do things instead of just writing your code like you are building normal HTML, CSS, and JavaScript projects. So they really want to see all this stuff. So my main focus on make for making this video is not just to show you how to do those. My main focus is to actually show you how to create a dynamic button with with Rehat JS. So let's go to our helpers. Let's go to our helpers. Where's our helpers folder? It is it. So let's go to buttons. This is buttons. 
So look at what is happening here. So I made a function, a function, then before, don't, really, don't forget to import your Ray Hat because you know it uses JSX, not actually an HTML, but it looks like HTML but not HTML. And it performs like it gives you what HTML tag is, but actually it is called it is JSX. So what I did here is I made a function that I pass a button name, button width, button height, and button color, then button shadow. So I made an inline CSS here. Width, button width, which is this button width, height, button height, which is the button height, then filter. I give it a um, a static filter shadow for the top and, but all i need to change is the filter color background filter color because i'm sure i'm abusing this filter on a different page on a different page my the page might be black so i really need to make the filter something like white in order for it to show and, and look nice yeah then i added the class name of app button then i go to my let's go to my helpers or css so our button what do we have we have width which we don't actually need to have width here and we have a background color because before it was static you understand it was static so let's see what we have when i remove this you can see it we still have our width and height so what am i not passing here let's look at it together let's go back to our helper button Okay, I'm not passing background color to it, so you can actually pass a background color to it. You can see when I remove the width and height, nothing was removed. You can see the height is still there and the width is still there. So, what I could do right now, okay, let me just show you guys very well. So now we remove the, and let's remove the height also to know if it is a bug or it's not just working. You see everything is still the way it is. Okay. So with that being said, let, let, me also, let me also remove the filter and know if we still have our filter back. Yeah, our filter is still there. Nice. So with that being said, let's go to um let's go back to where we are getting this button. So what you really need to understand here is this is a function, an ESC arrow function. Some guys call it fast arrow function. You can see. So what I did here is this button is 100 percent dynamic. You can see the button name. I am also passing the button name. I don't have a default text. So let's go to um, where are we have getting this button from. Where are we calling it? So it should be on the test on the test component. It should be on this folder. So this is it. Index.txt. So look at what I'm doing here. So first of all, I call I import the function, import app button from helper, then buttons. Then here I have my app button then the name is submit the weight the height then the color so to prove to you guys i'm actually passing this right let me go ahead and change the color to maybe something red that is the text color not the background color because i'm not passing the background color which you can also do so let's check what we have uh what is that? okay still compiling you can see compiling over here just look at my cursor so let's wait for it to compile my pc is really slow this morning you can see we have it right nice perfect so let's change this to um, maybe hire me and see what we have yeah so, <clears throat> so you can see it guys we have the hire me so now let's let's also change the weight and height and see what okay let's change this to maybe 190 pixel and see what we have you can see right so all you actually need to do is just look at your figma design or just look at your design and know the amount of weight you need to pass through it so with that being said guys so you can do this on your own you can add a background color to it and don't forget guys the way you do this is for example, you the first props we are passing to this is the button name, and after that we have the button width and button height. And right here you can see the first thing we pass is the button name, the width, then the height. So don't have the width first, then the higher me. So always make sure you pass it the way you have it here. So the first param is 
button name, then the button weight, then the button height. Yeah. So with that being said, guys, always make sure you structure your your project folder like this. You have your helpers function, your helpers folder, then your layout, wrap everything. So with that being said, if you really enjoy this type of video and you want to see more of this, kindly subscribe to my channel and yeah, and if you want to see how I made this layout, you can see it's hundred percent responsive. Both on mobile. So if you want to see how I did this, just drop it on the comment section and I'll make a video on, on it. Yeah. So thanks for watching and please don't forget to subscribe to my channel right now.